Zoe here, and today I'm joined by my amazing friend Sophie from Sophie's World. Ciao, amici! I'll be sure to link her channel below. And today we thought it'd be super fun to get together and discuss culture shocks upon moving to Italy. Sophie's lived here for two years now. Yes, in Roma. So we've collected a few kind of funny and interesting things that we noticed when we first made the move. So let's get started. culture shocks we noticed upon first moving to Italy from Canada and the US. Something that's super simple, that's so simple that isn't like really even really a shock but hard to get used to mm -hmm. would be military time. Do you use military time in Canada? No. Yeah. So now I do, I changed my clock immediately after moving here to military time because I felt like I understood that better. Me too. So that is the 24 hour clock. Sometimes people would be like, okay, yeah, let's meet at 19. And I'm like, I'm like, hold on. <laughs> Nine, eight, seven, nineteen. Okay, seven p.m. But get used to it. Now it's like second nature. Yeah, I like it better actually. And speaking of military, the military presence here. Yes. So that's quite different than Canada and the U.S. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know if it's augmented because of everything that's currently going on in world events, but it's crazy. I mean, everywhere you turn. There's military personnel with these big tanks with these like huge yeah. Especially outside of the metro station and main monuments like the Colosseum, yeah. the Vatican, they're around the military. And even, I don't know why, but I'm always like walking and like, okay, like don't make eye contact, like I did nothing wrong. <laughs> I don't know why. I always smile at me. <laughs> Ciao. You could be your future husband. Yeah. There we go. And transportation reliancy. Okay. Yeah, transportation reliancy. Speaking of, this mm -hmm. one came. She made the trek to my place this morning. It was supposed to take 20, less than 30 minutes, but you know, thinking about it more like an hour. Hashtag yeah. attack. Yeah. Today's Sunday, so Sunday, forget it. Yeah. But even on normal weekdays, the bus may come frequently, but the traffic it can break down. Yeah. But the thing is, in Canada and the US, if this were to happen in a big city like Toronto or New York or like Boston, like, you would, you you would know. get like coverage on the TV, like yeah. Metro, subway shut down, or yeah, I was gonna bus say, like, was all how it would break <laughs> loose. Like if these people were trying to get to work. It would literally be like the apocalypse in the States or in Canada. Yeah. It, it can be really frustrating. I don't know if I'll ever get used to it, but it's, I'm already like, okay, like I'm gonna leave later than expected because I know that the bus won't come in time. Mm -hmm. But then it's that those moments that the bus comes. Yeah, in time. So. I have a lot of attraction though, right? <laughs> Love attraction, Italian style. But the farmacia. The farmacia is well. I I think it sucks in Italy. Well, okay. There there are some really good big farmacias. Mm -hmm. But do you have like a Dwayne Reed or Rite Aid, CVS? We have Shoppers Drug Mart. Started from the bottom, not a whole team here. Where you, you go and you're like, okay, I need to get like cold medicine and hairspray and nail polish and yes. like a greeting card. You can find all of that there. Here the Fatmachia is like medicine. The occasional, if you're lucky, hair product. And the bigger ones. I mean, they don't suck, but they're just not what I'm used to. Yeah, they, they're not nothing like any kind of small department store. There's no like one-stop shop here. Have you noticed yes, that? Yes, there's no, but I like that. I love so it. Zoe likes that. I get frustrated about it. I'm like, oh, I have to run errands. Back in the States, I was like, okay, get in my car, pull up and do everything in one, like Target, for example, my Americans. Canadians, do you have something like equivalent to Target? Walmart, okay. Shoppers Drug Mart. You're one sub shop. Yeah. Whereas here, it's like you have to plan. Like, okay, oh no, I have to go here, but no, today's closed, and then here and here. But I, I guess you know we live in Rome, so we can't complain. Yeah, <laughs> I I like it though because I feel like it, it makes your day a lot more fun. Like you're like, oh, I gotta go here to get some bread. I gotta go here to get to the pharmacia. Yeah. I have to go to get coffee. It gives you an excuse to get out and about in the day. I need to be more in the Roman slow time. Mm -hmm. and I'm already there. Like this morning. If anyone wants to adopt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm basically Roman, Romana. I think she's more Roman than I am. <laughs> Fake it till you make it. <laughs> International food. Like if you, like the other day, we wanted to make tacos. Yes. Yeah. And we couldn't find, or she at least, no. couldn't find the ingredients. 
like the simplest thing that we would find in North America, say cilantro. Cilantro is very, very hard to find here because Italians don't normally like the taste. As no. you might know, the likeness of cilantro is a genetic thing. Some people think it tastes like soap. So Some true. people love it. I lo Do you love or hate? I love, I'm, I'm coasting, but Emilio, my fiance, hates it. He thinks it tastes like soap. Yeah, and he's Italian. I mean, I'm Italian as well, but but I really like cilantro. I'm an exception. A rare um, breed. Well, you know. I'm Mexican, and I should like cilantro. But you're also Italian. Yes, so I think the Italian and the Mexican are like battling for cilantro. <laughs> so one other thing is water at restaurants. If you've been to Rome, you know there's fountains everywhere, but if you go to a restaurant, even if you ask for tap, and I did mention this in another video and a lot of you are saying, no, you can request tap and they'll give it to you, people won't give you tap water. They'll look at you like... Or they'll say, no, we don't have. And you're like, like aqua di tap? Like water? Like table water? Yeah. yeah. Basically, you're going to get a nice glass bottle of fresante or naturale. The post office? <laughs> yes! So Soph actually mentioned this on a recent video on her channel, so be sure to link that video below too, where she talks about some things that she'll never get used to in Italy. And post office so, being one of them. The post office, as much as I, I love Italy, I love Roma, the post office is a very difficult thing to get used to, but a very huge shock because most of the time when you first move here, you have to visit the post office for one thing or another, paperwork and all this. Yes. You explain how it works, so if I feel like the post you have the a post better, office you, works. You have a better understanding than I do. Do I? <laughs> well, first of all, you have to take a number. Go, you walk in, yeah. and there's a screen of like I don't know A through H or something, and everything's in Italian. And usually there's a man standing there, so if you really need help, you can tell them what you're doing, and he'll tell you which one. Yeah. And then you press it. They print a little thing for you and you sit down and you wait for your number or letter to be called and then you go to the kiosk and do what you gotta do, do your thing. Yeah. But it sounds a lot easier than it actually is. I, I hate going to the post office. Yeah, but another thing too is at the post office, like when I first arrived, I had to mail something to the Italian consulate, let's say. And they don't sell stamps at the post office. You need different stamps for different things and you have to buy them from different places and like different tobacco stands. Yeah. And you can't buy stamps at the post office. This is <laughs> this is crazy talk if you're in North America. You also can't buy packaging. So, I mean, it's different. That thing for me, I don't think I'll ever get used to is the whole tobacco. It's like the stamp is a tax mm -hmm. and so Depending on what you need, like you get the stamp for what you need, like a passport or a letter or a package. There's not like stamps. Yeah, it's not like like in Canada, say if your letter weighs X amount of weight, you might need to put two or three stamps yeah. on it. It's And they're the same stamps, but you just gotta put more. Here it's specific stamps for, for specific things. And not to mention, I've mailed things. Some of you subscribers out there who have won things, and I know I've had the mail that took like six months to get to you. And I don't really understand why that yeah. is. Driving. <laughs> I'm driving. Well, have you experienced driving yet? I've driven it on a Vespa. Okay, that's a lot more terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> but street lights, street signs, these types of things are not visible. To no. Yeah. No. Yeah. And well, <laughs> last night was your first experience in a share and go. Mm -hmm. It's like a little car sharing, electric car. And I do drive in Rome. We have a car and I try to drive as least as, 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 as possible. Yeah, as, as least as possible because the rules are that there aren't any rules. The, the lanes, the paint, they don't repaint the lanes here so you don't know where the yeah. line is, yeah. people just kind of all go like that. And there's a lot of these like round, not even like a roundabout, but just like pia piazzas, right? Like people are just, <laughs> do, 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 do. not to mention like, okay, cars doing that, but then toss the Vespas in and... <laughs> and the Vespas. Oh, have you ever seen a European vacation, National Lampoons with Chevy Chase? I guess what we do is just drive around this circle here. Should be the second left exit. There's the hotel. Hey, look, kids! There's Big Ben and there's Parliament. There it is! There it is! There it is! I know. I can't seem to get over to the left, honey. I'll try next time. Sorry. We'll get out of this jam in a minute. Kids. Big Ben, Parliament, again. That is life, that is real life, people. <laughs> Closures. 
Oh, well, like normal closures, like the hours? Yes, okay. So a lot of restaurants actually don't open for dinner until late. So this would be different. Canada, US people probably eat dinner around five, between five and seven. Mm -hmm. In Italy, restaurants don't even open until like seven, eight. Yeah. Or they'll they'll have a schedule of opening and closing, but they don't really follow it. Yes. And some restaurants are only open at dinner. Whereas like in Canada and US, most of the time, like you could stop by a restaurant yeah. anytime between 12 and 12 at night. Like 12 in the afternoon, 12 in the evening, the restaurant is just open. Yeah. It's not, not the case in Italy. It's not, and some places also have one closure day. So in the States, maybe, I don't know about Canada, North mm -hmm. America, maybe it's like a Sunday. Usually restaurants are open all, yeah. seven days a week, but you would think maybe Sunday is the day, but it's weird. Some of these places have like a Tuesday or a Wednesday mm -hmm. closure day. Maybe they're just closed all day, so everybody automatically gets a day off. That's so nice. And then also the closures in August. Oh yeah. Here. Basically Rome shuts down. Because there's the Ferragosto, which is August 15th, which is a bank call. It's like a huge summer bank holiday for them, and that's when everyone usually gets time off. So the whole city, at least Rome, shuts down completely. Besides the city center touristy spots, other places are like closed from now until September 5th. <laughs> You're like, what? Just <laughs> it's true. Yeah, you gotta skate. Paying at bars. Yes. So when you order a coffee here in Italy, it's different. If you've ever been, you get a small receipt and it's your job to take your receipt up to the bar and then ask for your coffee. Like it's not gonna be put in queue, nobody's waiting in line. You have to like shove your way. You have to be aggressive. I was very standoffish when I first moved here. I was like, you know, is it my turn yet? Like, hello, ciao, please, you know? But then I realized, no, you gotta be aggressive, you gotta get in Push there. <laughs> and shove. <laughs> to get your coffee, get your espresso. But also at like some bars to order drinks, it's like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, I mean, when you have alcohol, that can get worse. No queuing. Take a number. <laughs> yeah. Basically, there's many, many places where you have to take a number. Take a number at the grocery store, you need to take a number to get olives, you need to take a number <laughs> to get, if you're getting cheese or meat at the grocery store, you gotta take a number. Which, in retrospect, sounds like a really good organized idea mm -hmm. if the Italians followed it. Yeah, because other people take it like the bar and they just go up there and I'm in a rush, I'm in a hurry, you know. All right guys, thank you so much. These are just some culture shocks that we could think of. If you are, say, a Canadian or American expat living in Italy, let us know what you've noticed. The fact that we've been here now, I've been here for almost a, like a full year. A year. So it's been here for two. So some of these we actually really had to think about because now we're so used to them. Yeah, it was difficult to come up with some of these. Yeah, and but Sof's gonna be doing a reverse culture shocks video on her channel, so be sure to check that out. I'll link it down below. Don't miss out on that one. We hope you found this enjoyable. Please know that we love Italy with all of our hearts and none of this is speaking yeah. poorly about them because we live know. here by choice. We so live here by choice. Italy must be doing something right. Yeah, some of us would die for Italy. <laughs>